Stephanie Miller. She's like a human macarena, something everyone did at parties in 1996. <laughs> 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 it is the... I never got invited would. to those parties. <laughs> Me neither. I don't remember them. 1-800-STEP-1-2, the phone number toll-free from anywhere. Oh, it's that time. Speaking of funny and smart, yeah. uh, I want to bring on Tina Dupuis. Oh, Tina. Tina Dupuis is brilliant. She's funny. She's a terrific writer. Oh, Tina. Tina does everything, and I just love her already. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Tina Dupuis. Good morning, Stephanie Miller. <laughs> See, I have to be here to keep pointing out how smart and funny you are just to counter the – what did the guy say on our blog? Wow. Well, Tina makes your, his pants tight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we apologize for All our right. listeners. All right. We, I I'm like a cheeseburger. Well, yes, sure. <laughs> I'm, on behalf of that guy, I apologize. Okay. Um yeah, let's talk about the NRA's ominous new enemies list. Ooh, it's at the enemies list. They're back. It's kind of hilarious, right? They won't have Dick Nixon right. to kick around anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so they so they compile this list, right, of people who are opposed to the NRA and people who are anti-gun and who want to right. destroy the Second Amendment, right? Because they're all the same basic thing. Uh, <laughs> right. Those three things. You basically, if you don't love guns, you hate Jesus and apple pie. Right. And that would include the 92% of Americans who are for background checks, presumably. So it, it, it's, right. it seems like they left some names out. It seemed a little thin to us. Yes. Uh, it was only 506 names. It looked like a pretty daunting list. It looks like, looked right. like they were kind of feeling sorry for themselves when they compiled it. I say way too short. Well, uh, right. I mean... You said besides it being a sad attempt to intimidate those who've spoken out against guns or specifically the NRA, it wasn't a very good list. Is it? It wasn't comprehensive. A list of politicians, but not Mayor Michael Bloomberg. A list of journalists, but not Rachel Maddow. And I noticed that there's no Stephanie Miller. I, I mean, really? Yeah, we're we're gonna get on that right after I get off the phone. <laughs> uh, if you because. You know, I didn't want to presume anything, but right. yes, uh, if you want to be on that list, you are on that oh, list. Oh, Matina, listen, hook me up. Uh, you got it. Um, that was the other thing. I was like, what am I not doing with my professional life that I am not on the NRA's <laughs> right. list? Where have I gone wrong? Well, exactly. I'm clearly not doing <laughs> The right people I, don't I, hate well, me. It seems, it seems to me anyone who is against little kids getting shot in the face should be on that list, which is probably more than 500 people. Yeah, guess. 506 right. specifically. That's it, right. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. 515. Yeah. Uh, but, like, you know, the, the Mayors Against Illegal Guns has 100 mayors on it already. I mean, that just just that and, and very few of those mayors were on the NRA's list, and, and arguably they would be, you know, uh, against uh, the Constitution, clearly. So uh, so we made a list of, of everyone in Congress and everyone in the Senate and all those mayors and uh, celebrities who have spoken out and, you know, poor Bob Costas, who was going to be hung out to dry, before, right. uh, you know, weeks before Newtown, he was, uh, you know, kind of in the crosshairs of the right wing that he was the guy who's just so completely inappropriate to mention violence on Monday Night Football. Yes, um, exactly. Well, and, and, you know, how they're right. And by the way, where are the courageous mayors for illegal guns? Where are those guys? <laughs> <laughs> right. That is a list I would like to see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is incredible to say, like Gail Trotter. I mean, it just, I, what is her group? I mean, literally, it's a group that, that is against the Violence Against Women Act. So, so right. women that are the actual victims of domestic violence, she does not support that. But she supports the woman's right to choose a, a whatever scary looking gun she would like, right? Right, and government just needs to get out of our lives and let us beat our wives and let us have all the guns we want. What's the big deal? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I love that. I don't know if you saw the Lawrence O'Donnell thing, but it was fairly hilarious. You don't go to the Senate to imagine things. You go to testify as to facts. But she literally went and talked about some hypothetical situation where there's five armed intruders and babies screaming in the background, right? Right, and you have to have an SKS assault we a weapon at that moment. Right, and, and the, I think one. I love the uh, the one congressman pointed out. Yes, the actual story you did tell that gun's not banned. <laughs> That's a shotgun. I mean, right, exactly. Right. Well, I mean, there is a bit of like a Bruce Willis fantasy with all this stuff. I mean, every single time we have one of these 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 horrible incidents, which you know are are 
you know, like Newtown, you had a bunch of people seconds after this tragedy uh, saying, you know, if I were there, I would have done this. And the fact of the matter, I've, I've talked to people who were um, – in the theater at Aurora uh, and uh, in, in Aurora, and and what happens is you don't know who's shooting. There are just it's it's so loud, yeah. it's so unexpected. It's not like the movies where you kind of like you can see the bad guy entering the theater and then you hear him, you know, uh, cock his gun. You th- this is like it's complete and utter chaos, and that's why in uh, in Midtown there are a bunch of people suing the New York police department for shooting them because they were trying to shoot the bad guy and they ended up just shooting a bunch of people because it was midtown right uh right. you know so it's this kind of fantasy that that we're in the movies and we're you know since we're good guys and and wayne lapierre loves to talk about good guys and bad yeah, guys yeah. uh we identify ourselves with having the proverbial white hats and we think that we're going to be able to to you know um, you know, we're going to win after two hours uh, at the end of the film. And well, that's just not how it works. You know, Tina, interesting, speaking of that whole the good guys with guns thing, I mean, we've been talking about this tragedy. Chris Kyle, you know, reportedly, you know, supposed to be the deadliest sniper in American military history. Mm, I mean, right. you know, reportedly a good guy with a gun was trying to help other veterans. And, you know, but again, just another example of how, you know, a, a good guy with a gun doesn't solve every problem. In this case, it ended in tragedy. Right. And he was at a shooting range. Right. Yes. You know, yes. Um, it, there was like, a, I mean, you just can't. And I and I you know, the, the fact of the matter is, and, and, I've, and I've said this on your show and I and I say this and I'll say it until my my face turn, turns blue. If you look at other countries who have fewer guns than we do, we have the highest amount of civilian gun ownership in the world. And if the NRA and La Pierre were right and more guns make us safer, we would have the fewest amount of gun deaths but the per capita. Is true. Right. And the opposite is true. We are 14th in the, in the world. Out of 200 countries, we are 14th uh, in gun deaths and even higher in gun uh, injuries. Right. So it's just not true what they're saying. Uh, we're, we're supposed to be, you know, we're in an industrialized nation. We're still the richest country in, on the planet. And yet, you know, if you go outside in some neighborhoods in America, it's, you know, pollution. Yep. Um, Tina, one of my other um, hot, smart uh, girl writer friends, uh, Joan Walsh <laughs> of Salon, uh, she wrote a piece, you know, entitled Obama's gutsy gun control push. And it is interesting. She quotes in here like Senator Chris Murphy, who said too many people in Washington want to eulogize specific pieces of gun legislation, gun reform legislation before the debate has even started. And, you know, again, not to get over optimistic, but I do think this time really is different. And the NRA really is so out of step with the American mainstream. I, I'm I still remain somewhat hopeful. Do you about what can get done on this? I'm, I remain really hopeful, and I like that. And I and I wrote about this weeks ago. I think that the assault weapons ban kind of sends us down this weird path where people who don't like guns or just don't like being shot um, <laughs> are yeah. forced. You know, I mean, there is a distinction there. Um, <laughs> are forced to talk about uh, different kinds of guns and ammunition and magazine capacity and things that they clearly don't know anything about. And so they get – it's a booby trap set by gun enthusiasts where you, you basically oh, – Well, we had a guy yesterday. Snagged. We had a guy yesterday, Tina. That wasn't your stupid. It wasn't an assault weapon in yeah. the new town. Yes, it was. Like, oh, okay. yeah, he just shot himself so, with a shotgun. That's, right. That was yeah. where the shotgun was used. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So the assault weapon, weapons ban basically causes people who just don't want to get shot to have to talk about guns intelligently, which is not their obviously right. their their uh, best foot forward. Uh, but when we talk about you know giving uh, giving the ATF teeth to actually enforce these, these said gun laws that the that we supposedly have, um, that you know if we uh, and there's been studies like in Chicago that the main uh, saturation of guns on the street and used in illegal uh, in, in crimes are done through straw purchases and straw right. purchases are, are how our guns are getting onto our streets uh, that, you know, the secondary market are how 18 year olds, Stephanie, are able to buy guns. Yep. Usually you're supposed to be 21, but 18 year olds in the secondary market at these gun shows are able to purchase weapons and there's no background background checks and nobody's checking and and uh, it, they're not registered we don't know who has all these things and right. it makes law enforcement very tricky so if we are talking about you know uh, for the greater good 
And well, as far as gun safety, the assault weapons ban will, will stop a few deaths, as, but having uh, the ATF have teeth and enforcing these laws right. well, they're, uh, right. much better. Tina, I saw, I think, that same piece where they were talking about some gun dealers just turn a blind eye when people are buying, like, Ugh. say, multiple, multiple uh, mm-hmm. of the same gun. They know they're not buying them for themselves. They're buying them to, to resell them to people without background checks, right? Right, because they've been able to do it with impunity. Uh, there's there's nobody to enforce these laws. They're not going to lose their license. There's nobody checking up on that. Like, And there's a financial motive. I mean, let's be honest. They are in a business. And, and the, the, the gun lobby, they're not lobbying for, you know, for you and me to have our constitutional rights and our freedoms. They're lobbying for gun, gun manufacturers to not be able to get sued. And that was a thing that we did in the, you know, I mean, the Winchester Mansion is a fantastic example uh, of, of of this kind of uh, right. idea. I mean, they used to, they used to sue gun manufacturers, and now yeah. we don't because we don't have that ability. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, absolutely. That I think that's a huge piece of it. Tina, the fabulous Tina Dupuis, speaking on behalf of the uh, large constituency of people that do not like being shot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> giving us voice. Uh, from- it's a, you know, it's a niche. I, I, it's, you know, a niche. it's a niche, yeah. yes. <laughs> Thecontributor.com. Tina, always great to talk to you, honey. Talk to you again real soon. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, there she Yay. goes. I don't like being shot. I don't like oh. being shot. Okay. <laughs> Tina speaks for me. I'm Spartacus. <laughs> 45 minutes after the hour, right back on The Stephanie Miller Show. Call the political party line now, 1-800-STEP-12. 